to you and good afternoon. Welcome to today's webinar. I can't tell you how excited I am about what we're going to be talking about today because this message is all about Jesus. There's nothing better than what we're going to be speaking about today. And I, I know you're going to love it. I know you're going to enjoy joining in. Um, but a key part of joining in, if you want to be able to interact with me, there's two ways you can do it. One, you can type some things into the chat on YouTube. And that's that's fantastic. We'll try and pick up on some of those things like, hi, Bird Boys, and hi, Oscar, and Jake. It's great to have you with us. Um, so we can interact with you when you type some things in there. You might want to type hello now to let us know that you're in the house. Um, but the second way, if you've been with us on a webinar before, you will know this, is that you go on to a thing site called menti.com. M-E-N-T-I dot com. And you type in the code that is above my head now, 3769 three four one four or you can click on the link in the YouTube description just down below me now and I'm going to be asking you different questions during this webinar together and you will have a chance to respond to them. Now you can use a separate device or if there's two or three of you you can use two or three devices if you have enough going on around there um, or you can open up a separate tab on your web browser and if you need some help I'm sure your mum or dad will help you to do that so you could be watching the webinar, what I'm doing here, as well as voting and interacting on menti.com. And you can see already that some people over this way here are beginning to vote and click on the heart and uh, to click on the thumbs up and the cat. Why a cat, you ask? I answer, I have no idea why we've got a cat, but it's there anyway. Hi, Olivia. Nice to see you there. Hello, Paul, as well. And the unknown, we say hi. Everyone is saying hi in the chat. We're saying hi back to you along the way but click on there go on to menti.com and you'll be able to vote 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 with your finger and uh, we're going to ask you a number of different questions for example the first question I have for you is what background do you think that I should have behind me right now option number one is these lovely clouds with stars all over the place option number two if you don't like that one you can have the beautiful spring farm because spring has sprung around us and it is springtime. Option number three, you might say it's Easter, we need to have something Eastery. And if you'd like something Eastery, you can have this cross background. Or if you just like a lot of colour, then you can have this lot of colour here. Um, Yasmin, Olivia, welcome to you. It's nice to have you back with us before. I'm sure you guys have been with us lots of times. So if this is your first time with us here, we're going to ask you a couple of questions on menti.com and you will be able to click, 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 click and work out how to be part of this. And um, if you want to be part of it, you're going to have to go to menti.com. The code is above me now, 37693414. It's also in the link below in the YouTube. You can type in the code or just click on that link that is there. So you'll see there is a little bit of a time lag between me talking and you voting. It's about 20 to 30 seconds, I think you'll find. So we don't mind that. We try and make space. That's why sometimes when you're voting, I talk for a little bit to give you a chance to catch up because I'm slightly ahead of you with my talking. But the voting um, comes in live and instantly at the same time. Well, let's see how our votes are going and let's see what you think should be behind me today. There's two of you who are saying, we want the colour dots. We like colour. And there are 14 of you who are saying the cross is on a hill. And there are eight of you saying paper clouds. And two of you, someone's just voted, saying the spring farm. So it looks like you guys are in for Easter. Good Friday was yesterday. Easter Sunday is tomorrow. We are smack bang in the middle of Easter. And if we're in the middle of Easter, I think I agree with you if we're in Easter we should jolly well have an Easter background to remind us what this time is all about. Okay, well, let's move on to a second question for you. I've got a number of Easter eggs here because it's Easter. And uh, you can choose whether I should be having in the break time. My snack time should be the Freddo egg or the bunny egg or whether it should be the whisper. The whisper. Shh. 
the Whisper. Or whether you think it should be the Unicorn Smarty Egg. I don't know if that changes anyone's mind. We've got a lot of eggs here and you have to choose one of these. Whatever you choose, that's the one I get to have. Whatever you don't choose, it's probably going to go back to my children to eat them. So they won't mind either way. Um, so choose what you think I should be having. Should it be the Whisper, the Buddy, the Freddo or the Smarties. The choice is yours. And we're taking a look at the voting. Quite a few of you have voted already. Um, so we'll keep those votes going a little bit longer so you can get used to how it works. Let's take a look. Don't forget, if you ever log out of Menti, because we might be doing some other things as well, if your Menti thing goes to sleep, you just refresh it and it will come back woohoo, awake like this. Um, the code is always going to be above me when the Menti screen's on. But even if it's not on, it is always in the description below in YouTube. So welcome, welcome, welcome to this very special webinar. We're so glad that you guys are here. Oh, my goodness. We are neck and neck between the whisper and the bunny. Ooh, will it be the whisper? The whisper. <laughs> will it be the bunny? <laughs> I don't really know what bunnies have to do with Easter, to be honest with you. Um, I know what eggs have to do with these too. It's like new life, new birth. Bunnies are just cute. <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know. I don't know what they have to do with it. But let's take a look. Let's take the percentage of and see the actual numbers. Oh, my goodness. It really is neck and neck. If you've not yet voted, you could make all the difference. Um, who's it going to be? It looks like the gold bunny is just ahead a little bit. It's now 10 for the bunny. Go bunny, go bunny, go bunny, go bunny. Ah, <laughs> oh my goodness. It's really, it's almost split all quarters into quarters exactly. Um, but it looks like we decided to go for the golden bunny. Here he is. And uh, that's going to be my snack. I'm just going to pop these other things out the way down here so they're not in my way for the rest of this time. And uh, let's ask you one more question before we get stuck into the webinar. How many of the webinars have you been to so far in this time? Well, you can see on the screen there are six webinars here plus this seventh one that we're in the middle of. And the six webinars we've done uh, listening to God, we've done sharing Jesus, we've done thinking like Jesus, but getting the identity of Christ. We've done the end times, that was a deep one. We've done who am I, that was identity. And we've done an introduction to the Holy Spirit. Um, and then we're doing this one today is our Easter special. So how many of the webinars have you been to? Let me know, get your votes in. You can see, wow, quite a few of you have been here a few times before. Some of you have been to all seven, including this one. And uh, this is really interesting. This morning when we ran this webinar, there were loads and loads of people who were here for the first time. Uh, but it looks like you, Afternooners, this is the time that works for you. And so you've been here quite a few times before. Wow, a real spread of times. If this is your second time with us, I want to say especially hello, hello to you. It's great to have you with us. Hey, listen, we've got um, my, three of my children are back, Matthew, Benjamin and Abigail. And they've got some little sketches that will come towards the end of our time together, which I have to say there's one of them that makes me laugh. But we also have... Um, Joshua, who is my eldest son, and he is going to be joining in with us in little places all the way through this webinar. So look out for him. It's going to be fantastic because this is our Easter webinar. Well, what is Easter all about? The main thing of Easter is when Jesus died on the cross and comes back to life again. And I reckon seeing as you guys have been to a few webinars now, you probably have a pretty good idea of why Jesus died on the cross. Well, I would like you on Menti to take a little look and say, why did Jesus die on the cross? You, you might have a whole sentence or a phrase that you want to give, or you might have a number of different ideas, more than one, of why Jesus died on the cross. Well, type it in. I know it'll take you a little bit of time to be able to type in those answers. And uh, we're just checking and seeing the things that you're writing so that we can make sure that, uh, that good things are coming out and we get an idea. I get a sneak peek before you get to see what has been written and I uh, get some great ideas. But it looks like lots of you are saying a similar thing at this moment. Oh, fantastic. Some really, really good answers coming through. You guys are doing brilliantly today. Well done. Well done. Well done. Because it's good before I dive in. We're going to be we're going to be talking about some pretty deep stuff today. 
Um, and it's good to know what you know before we begin. So we don't end up teaching you something that you already know, but we add to what you know, because, you know, one of the amazing things about God's Bible the word of God, is that when you read a bit and you've got something from it, on a different day, you can read something else and go deeper and deeper and deeper. Why? Because the Bible isn't just any book. It's been put together by God himself. And he has tied this book written over hundreds of years into one storybook that begins in Genesis and ends in Revelation. Aha. So let's take a look and see some of these answers that are going on. Wow, some amazing answers that have been put in here. Uh, let's take a look. I'm just flicking through. Um, fantastic. Uh, da, 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 da. Just clicking on a couple of them. Um, someone's saying hi Ollie to me, but we won't put that one up for you all to see. Let's, uh, hi, whoever said hi Ollie to me. That's nice to hear, hear from you. To forgive everyone's sins, to save us from our sins. Lots and lots and lots of forgiving from sins, saving us from our sins, delivering us from our sins. Yes, this is exactly why Jesus died on the cross. To get rid of our sins, to take the punishment someone's written for all of our sins. These are all brilliant, brilliant answers. Well, when you think about Jesus's life, there are four kind of main events that take place that we celebrate in Jesus's life. Two of them are happening at Easter time. The first one is when Jesus was born. We think about that in Christmas time, when God himself came in human form. We call it, if you need a fancy word or if you're making notes, we call it the incarnation. It just means when God came in human form at Christmas, the baby Jesus was born. Then we have Jesus dying on the cross. And then we have um, not just Jesus dying on the cross, but then he comes alive again, the resurrection. And the fourth key event, if you like, in Jesus's life on earth is when he is taken up to heaven, which is known by some people as the ascension. Now, I want you to think, which of those do you think is kind of the most important? Um, before we before we answer that question, I want you to know that there is no wrong answer for this. There is no wrong answer for this question. None. Not one answer is wrong, okay? Because each one of those four things are as important as each other, and actually you can't have one without the other three being there. So, for example, if Jesus had never been born as in, in human form, he could never have died on the cross for our sins. And if he hadn't died, he couldn't be raised again. If he wasn't raised again, he wouldn't ascend up to the Father in heaven. So each one of them is important. But you know, even the ascension, when Jesus goes up to heaven, he says, I've got to go up so the Holy Spirit can come down. So that's pretty important if we're going to live out for God. But I want you just to have a little bit of a think to say, hmm, which one is the, which order, if you had to learn about these four things, which order would you put them in? Uh, with a few of you beginning to vote on this one now. And let's go and take a look and see how the votes are going. Um, I think we'll turn those results off just for a moment, hide them away. And you can see these are currently uh, above me. They're in the order that they happened in, in real life. So they were kind of in chronological order, time order at the moment. First, Jesus was born. Then he died. Then he came back to life. And then he went up into heaven so the Holy Spirit could come down. So we'll give you just a little bit longer to vote away and put in your thoughts of what order you think these things should come in. Um, and as I said, there's no wrong answer with this. We're all going to have slightly different opinions. But there's a reason I'm wanting you to think in this way, because I want you to understand something very important. And if you want to know what that important thing is, you're going to have to wait. <laughs> I'm going to tell you in just a moment. Well, let's take a look at these results and see. It looks like top of the list at the moment is Jesus's resurrection. Second is Jesus's birth. The third one is Jesus's death. And the fourth one is Jesus going up to heaven. I think that looks like a pretty good order. There's quite a few of you still to do the voting, I think, from what I saw earlier. Um, so we'll let you have just a little bit longer, about another 20 seconds for you to answer up. That's it. Here comes the answers. They're rolling in now. I can see that. And uh, I, I would actually, for myself, I would put the resurrection as the most important thing for us to look into and know about. And here's why. 
as you have all said, when Jesus died on the cross, he died there to take away our sins and a whole load of other stuff that we're going to find out about in a bit. But to prove that he'd managed to destroy not just our sins, but death and sickness, Jesus had to come back to life again. If he didn't come back to life, then, well, then how could we know that he'd really beaten death? Makes sense, doesn't it? Ha! Huh. Well, if Jesus wasn't born, of course, the other things couldn't happen. But I would probably say the death of Jesus is pretty important. I might put that as the number two in my little list. But, you know, as I said, there's no right or wrong. And on a different day, we might have them in a different order. But I just wanted you to think in this way, because lots of people have said, I don't believe that people can come back to life again. And of course, normally people don't. But if you know that God is real, that's what God can do. And he did do when Jesus died on the cross and he came back to life again. When Jesus was there in the tomb, he came back to life and the angels moved the stone so that Jesus was then seen by hundreds of people. And some people have thought, I don't believe in God. <laughs> and I don't think people come back to life. <laughs> And then they've gone away to look into the facts and try and work out what is true and what is not. And they've gone away not believing in God. But when they've looked into it and spent time studying it, they've come back realising that Jesus came alive again. And if he came alive again, that means he dealt with our sins. And if he's dealt with our sins, that means we have to choose to follow him. Because what other hope is there to get rid of the wrong things that we've done? Except that Jesus died in our place for us. And so, um, take a little look at this guy. He's enjoying life and he's walking along. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, come on. This is serious. Uh, <laughs> he was just walking along and <laughs> suddenly this box came from above and just splat. It flattened him. He just got flattened to pieces by the box. And there's a verse in Romans chapter 6 that we're going to learn later on that says the wages of sin is death. In other words, people who sin, they deserve to die. I'm not just talking about death. I'm talking about death, death, or as the Bible calls it, a second death. That if you don't want to follow God, God says, well, you will have to be separated from me forever. Well, that's not a great place to be. You saw the little pear walking along. He got squashed. Well, I want you to imagine this. When Jesus died on the cross, he didn't do it because he was bored or because he had nothing better to do on a Friday. No, he did it because he wanted to take our place. It's as if he rushed over as he saw the box about to fall on us, pushed us out of the way, and pff, he was squashed by the box instead. And the only reason Jesus could do that was because there was no box hanging over his head because he had never done anything wrong. You see, Jesus swapped places with us when he died on the cross. We interrupt this webinar with some breaking news. The Pharisees have hidden the body of Jesus. This is breaking news right off the press and it doesn't really make sense. Hold up. The Pharisees got past the Roman guards, moved the massive stone out of the way of the tomb, stole Jesus' body without anyone knowing. Wait, hold up. I swear the, I swear the disciples... Is this right, Greg? Greg, is this right? Yeah, yeah, this is right. The disciples are saying Jesus is alive and walking around now. What? Okay, well, why don't the Pharisees just bring him out? So... Is, any, is anyone else confused? Cameraman? No? What, what's going on here? Okay, breaking news. The Pharisees have not hidden the body of Jesus. Oh. 
Okay, well there was some breaking news for you. Um, at first the report came maybe the Pharisees, uh, maybe the Pharisees stole the body. Does that make sense to you? The Pharisees wanted Jesus to die. They might have taken the body and hidden it away so nobody else could get it. But then when the disciples started to say, hey, Jesus is alive again, all they had to do was bring out the body. Did they do it? No, they did not. Well, we're going to look at five different things that happened on the cross. Five things that happened around the time of Jesus dying on the cross. And I would like you to choose one of these five boxes for us to look behind. We're going to look through behind all five of them as we go through this webinar. But you have a choice of which one we look behind first. So, again, if you've lost the link on Menti, it's in the YouTube description. And uh, if you need the link, it's also above you now, 3769 four one uh, three four one four and uh, you can start to vote to say which of these five boxes shall we open up first to see what's inside it it could be something exciting it's going to be something to do with what happened when jesus died on the cross so vote now and decide which of these five boxes we can look into when you've done this one and we've talked about it there will be another voting thing coming up but whatever box you've already chosen and has already been opened, don't vote for that one because we can only open each box once. Let's see how the votes are going in. Well, it looks like at the moment box number five is just in the lead. But let's see which box we are planning on actually going to first. Oh, it's so close between them all. We'll leave you a little bit longer. Who's going to get there first? Uh, we've got a few more people who've been voting in this time. So keep voting, keep getting your votes in. And uh, we're going to give you just a five more seconds, four more seconds, three more seconds, two more seconds, one more second. And we've closed the voting. It looks like we're going to box number five. Well, let's take a look behind box number five and see what's there. Ha! Behind box number five is this cross. And the cross was made out of wood and wood comes from a tree <laughs> i know what you're thinking you're thinking great ollie well done that's totally amazing it blows my mind great i think i knew that trees make wood and the cross was made out of wood i think i knew that the tree and the cross came from each other all right okay calm down calm down i am calm you don't sound calm i am calm why am i talking to myself i don't know no the reason this is important is because in the Old Testament, we read that anyone who hangs on a tree is cursed. Now, that means that when Jesus hung on the tree, he became a curse. Wait a minute. What does that mean? Why would Jesus want to take on a curse and be cursed? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's find out one by opening one of the other boxes. And whichever box you want to open, well, it cannot be box number five because box number five has already been opened. You have to open box number two, four, one, or three. Don't vote for box number five because box number five, as you can see behind me, has already gone. But put in your vote for whichever other number you want us to open next to see what happens. And we're going to discover as we do that why Jesus wanted to hang on the cross so he could be called cursed. Sounds strange, but let's take a look and see how the voting's going. Wow, we've got a pretty clear consensus going on here. It looks like lots and lots and lots of you are voting for box number four. Well done, you. If you voted for one, two or three, your time is coming. If you voted for five, your time has been and gone. We just did that on the last one. OK, so but let's just see how we go with this. And I think it looks like it's box number four that we open up next. So we're going to go over to box number four and we're going to open it up and see what's behind it. Ah. Now, behind box number four, as you can see, is this sharp edge. It's actually a spear. And they used a spear to do all kinds of things. You've probably seen the Roman soldiers picture them marching with their spears and their shields. But the spear, a bit like this one that you can see right behind me now, this kind of spear would have been used to shove into Jesus and to see the Bible tells us that water and blood came out. And that 
that just means that Jesus had been dead for long enough that water had separated out from the blood. Now, what's interesting about this is it fulfills a prophecy from Psalm 34 that says, his side is pierced, it says elsewhere, but in Psalm 34 it says, not a bone on his body will be broken. The uh, two guys either side of him, because they weren't quite dead yet, they ended up having their legs broken so that they would die quickly. It may sound a bit gory, it is a bit gory, but it was a kind thing to do because they'd been in pain so long. But because Jesus was already dead at that moment, the expert in crucifixions was able to say he had definitely died. And because of that, well, because of that, we know that he fulfilled the prophecy that not a bone of his was broken. Okay, it's time to vote again. Are you going to go for box number one, box number two, or box number three? It looks like we are determined to do these in reverse order. I can see that you guys are keen for it to be done in reverse order. So well done, well done. It looks like we are doing that. Don't vote for box number five, I say to you. If you're voting for box number five, you've missed your time. It's either box one, box two, or box three. Those are the only three boxes left. Which is what is going to be behind the next box? Let's take a look, take a look. Or we'll give you a few more moments. Quite a few of you still to vote. So it's only box one, two, or three that is left. And you can see that's behind me now. Uh, that is all that we have left on the screen behind me. Number one, two or three. Will it be the blue, yellow or green? We're going to find out soon. Find out soon. Which one will it be? Well, I can see which one it's going to be. Um, it's definitely going to be box number three. All right, I get the idea. We will go for box number three. Let's take a look and see what's behind it. In box number three, it looks like we have this strange implement here. This is actually a whip. It was used to whip people. And uh, they used it on all kinds of people from slaves and so on. But Jesus himself was also whipped. Now, if you get whipped by something that's got straight lines on it, you're going to end up with straight lines or stripes on you. You'll look a bit like a tiger with a stripy back. And when Jesus was whipped, he had stripes on his back. And that's exactly what it says in Isaiah 53. It says, by his stripes, we are healed. And in Matthew chapter 8, you can read this passage yourself later, we see that Jesus was fulfilling this passage when he healed Peter's mother-in-law and all who were sick came to him. And it says, this is the fulfillment of what happened from the prophet 300 years ago that now Jesus is showing that the stripes he's going to get on his back will lead to physical healing for people. By his stripes, you are healed. And uh, so whenever you think of the whip that whipped Jesus, you can think of how by his stripes, we are healed. We interrupt this webinar with some breaking news. Apparently, the women have stolen the body of Jesus. This is breaking news. And they have apparently, to do that, they must have beaten up the Romans, moved the stone, hidden it, and... This is confusing. Hold up. So these three women attacked some trained Roman soldiers, then moved a stone which took ten men to put it into place in the first place. What? This can't be true. Okay, this, this, this must be fake news. Breaking news, the women have not stolen the body. <laughs> Okay, the women stealing the body. These women, they were weeping, they were weak, and they were no match for a bunch of Roman soldiers. There's no way that could happen. Some people, they say with the women, maybe they took a right instead of a left. In fact, a lawyer who went to study this, he thought through all these things and wrote a book called Who Moved the Stone? Because he's like, someone must have done it. And one thought he had was, well, maybe nobody moved it, but the women went into the graveyard because they were crying. They went right instead of left and got lost and ended up in an empty tomb and then the disciples they were crying and they went right instead of left and ended up in an empty tomb and uh, then after that the Roman soldiers went everybody's over there we must be guarding the wrong tomb and then the Pharisees said oh he wasn't there he must oh I don't know they could have just opened the tomb he was actually in 
would have solved all the things and gone, here's the dead body. But they couldn't do that because Jesus's body wasn't there. He'd been raised back to life again. So that was fake news that thanks to Josh, we've now found out the truth that the woman did not steal the body. Right, well, it's, we've got two boxes left. I can see you guys have been voting on this already. Box number one or box number two, the choice is up to you. Which one do you think we should open next? Let's take a look. There's still somebody voting for box number five. You missed the chance for box number five. It's already gone. But it's neck and neck. We've literally gone five, four, three, and it looks like we're going to be going two in a minute, but we will see which box it is. It's between one and two, only one and two. Don't vote for any others. It's either one or two, or one or two, or one or two. A hoop -a hoop -a oh, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's take a look. Oh, yes, we do. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's take a look. It is going to be box number two. All right, then. We're going to go over to box number two and see what's inside it. Inside box number two, we see these nails. Now, these nails were used to hang Jesus to the cross and to hold him to the cross. But I want you to think for a moment about this verse that Jesus said. Um, Jesus said... Ah, nobody does this to me. I choose to lay down my life. So in a way, it wasn't really those nails that stuck Jesus to the cross. It was his love for you because he wanted to be held to that cross so that he could take on your sin. And well, we mentioned about him becoming a curse. Well, we haven't explained that yet because we haven't opened what's behind box number one. Do you know what? We have to decide. Do we want to open what's behind this last box? You've got a choice on Ventimeter now. Turn to it and make your decision. Would you like to see what is behind box number one? And I've given you three choices for this. I've given you the choice of yes. I've given you the choice of no. And I've given you the choice of only if there is no bear behind it. All right, let's take a look at the results and see how they're coming in. You guys are pretty keen not to meet a bear. I don't want to see a bear. Oh, lots of yeses and lots of no bears. But otherwise, please do open it for us. Please, please, please. Yes, no. Oh, no, only if there's not a bear. <laughs> You guys, you are not friendly with bears. I think that is probably good advice. I mean, a cute little cuddly teddy bear is one thing, but a big growling gorilla <laughs> is another thing. And you know I'm here in our studio as I'm doing this. And if the bear came out of the box at me, I would be in big trouble. So thank you so much, guys, for keeping me safe by saying only if there is not a bear. Well, I know for certain there is no bear behind this. And so we are safe to be able to open up this last box. And let's take a look and see what is behind it. Aha! We see the crown of thorns is here. And this crown is going round and round. This crown reminds us of a couple of things. First of all, in the book of Genesis, after Eve took from the fruit, right in Genesis chapter 3, God put a curse on the serpent, put a curse on Eve, and a curse on Adam. And Adam's curse was that there would be hard work in the ground and there would be thorns that he would have to take. But can you see how Jesus took the crown of thorns onto himself? He took Adam's curse off Adam and put it on himself. That's exactly what happens with every bit of the cross. Jesus takes all of the evil of this world onto himself so that we can be pure before God and stand before him. It's amazing. Not only that. In these days when Jesus was crucified, often if you were fighting a bottle, battle, not a bottle, if you're fighting a bottle, I hope you would beat the bottle. But if you were fighting a battle and you were fighting in a field that was full of daisies, they might make a little daisy chain and give you a daisy wreath if you were the winner of the battle. If you were fighting in a field that was full of poppies, they might make a wreath out of poppies, put it on your head, and then you'd be the winner of the battle that took place in the poppy field. Well, where Jesus was crucified, there were thorns outside the city, and they made a wreath out of that, not realizing that they were not only saying that Jesus was taking the curse onto himself so that we could be free, but he was willing to take the curse of death even on himself so that we could be free from death 
but also that Jesus, by taking that crown, was being pronounced the winner in the battlefield against the works of evil and darkness. How cool is that? How powerful is the cross? And all of this is because Jesus died on the cross for us in human form. He had to be like us to be able to take our punishment. And uh, you can see here, I've got this bread for my communion, which we're going to be doing later. And I want you to know that Jesus said, this bread, it's my body, which was broken for you. And you can see that Jesus' body was definitely broken with the whip, with the nails, with the crown of thorns that was put on him. But he said, I'm letting my physical body be broken so that you can be made whole again as I intended for you to be. Jesus allowed his body to be broken so that we could be whole. And if Jesus hadn't been a human, he wouldn't have been able to do it. So it's well worth remembering every time you take that communion bread that Jesus stood in your place from one person to another so that you would be able to do all that God intended for you. We interrupt this broadcast and this webinar for a third time to bring you some more breaking news. That's right, the disciples have apparently stolen that. What is... What is this? Greg, third time people are stealing the body? This is, this is outrageous. Again, they must have got past the, the, the trained Roman soldiers. Well, maybe they were sleeping on duty. Hold up, no, that, that can't be the case, because Roman soldiers, if they sleep on duty, they get killed. So they wouldn't sleep on duty, because otherwise they're dead. So uh, they, they, they took on some trained Roman... And then, hold up, they, they stole the body of Jesus, but... Uh, Greg, is this right that hundreds of other people have seen eyewitness accounts of Jesus being alive? Not just that. Yeah, this is right. The hundreds of other people have seen Jesus, not just the disciples. This is this can't be true. Again, oh my goodness, what is it with all this fake news? Okay, breaking news: the disciples did not steal the body of Jesus. So if the Pharisees didn't take the body. And if the women didn't take the body, and if the disciples didn't take the body, remember, these disciples, they were scared. They were scared that the Romans would come after them, that the, the Jewish leaders would then come after them because they were followers of Jesus. You know how scared Peter was. What did he say? He said, I don't know Jesus. I never heard of him. Three times he denied Jesus when he went to follow him. And all the other disciples, as for them, they ran away. They were scared. They weren't in a place to fight a whole tribe highly trained Roman army. They were just fishermen. There's no way they could have stolen that body. So if the disciples didn't take it, if the women didn't take it, if the Pharisees didn't take it, if it wasn't an empty tomb, what else could it have been unless Jesus actually came to life again? Well, it's time to look at our memory verse for today. And this comes from Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Oh yeah, we're going to take some words out, see if you can keep up. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Let's take more words out. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. You know wages are what you get when you work hard and you work really hard and then you're paid for your work. Well the payment we deserve, the wages we deserve for the sins we do is to be death, to be separated from God forever. But Jesus gives us a gift. We don't have to do anything. We just have to accept that gift to be able to have life forever with Jesus. And the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what it says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Well, I think it's time for us to have a little break now. We're going to take a two-minute little ad break to tell you about some really exciting things we have coming up and how you can be involved in future webinars in a totally new and different way, as well as be involved with tens of thousands of other people praying for over 40 nations around the world. It's coming up soon, a special prayer relay. And if you look out carefully, you'll see there's another free webinar coming up in a month. And we have also um, our Bible experience coming up next week in the Easter holidays. If you want to go from Genesis to Revelation and get the big picture of the Bible, you're going to find out all about it. And whilst we do that, there's also going to be something for you to vote on in your mentee if you would like to do that. Let's take a two minute break. I'll see you in a bit. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. It's time. For my generation. 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 To stand up. And pray. For the nations. Of the world. I just want to get the big picture of the Bible. I just want to know God more. Hi, I'm Ollie Goldenberg from Children Can and I want to invite you to join me for the Bible Experience. We're going to race from Genesis through to Revelation. Join me for two sessions this Easter holidays. I look forward to seeing you then. Well, 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 fantastic. And I hope you enjoyed watching all of them and uh, you're going to be part of this all. And I can see already looking at the little vote that we were giving you that lots and lots of you are planning on coming to the Bible webinar or hoping that you can come to the Bible webinar. And I look forward to seeing you there. Well, we've already talked a little bit about how when Jesus died on the cross, he took on our curse so that we could be free to follow God. He took on all kinds of things. He swapped the bad stuff for the good stuff. And we've got some sketches from Matty, Benny and Abby. And I want you to decide which of these things Jesus swapped when he died on the cross for us. From bad to good. From junk food to fruit. Sock to clean sock. Okay, vote now. What do you think it is? Was it from bad to good? Was it from junk food to fruit or was it stinky socks to clean socks? Which of those ones did Jesus swap on the cross when he died on the cross 
for you. Um, so it is bad to good, junk food to food, stinky socks to clean socks. The choice is up to you. Which one of those do you think Jesus swapped with us when he died on the cross? I'm going to give you just a little bit longer and then we are going to reveal those results as they are coming in. They are pouring in now. It looks like most of you have voted. Let's see uh, what they say. So most of you are saying Jesus swapped bad for good. A few of you are saying he swapped the junk food for fruit. I don't know if they had junk food back in those days. Um, so I don't, I, yeah, yeah, it is good to eat healthily. You'll make, you'll make a good point. It's good to eat healthily, but I don't think that's what Jesus died on the cross for. He didn't die on the cross so you could eat a banana. You could eat a banana even if Jesus didn't die on the cross. But what you couldn't do was live in a way that pleased God, a good way for him. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he swapped from bad to good. Take a look at this. We've only got three of these. This is number two. From a frown to a smile. Let's take a look and see how you guys are doing. Was it from a frown to a smile? Did Jesus take our frown so that we could have a smile? Did Jesus take our fruit so that we could eat sweeties? Or did Jesus take slavery um, so we could to have family. Which of these did Jesus swap on the cross? It's up to you to decide. It's one of these I know, but which one is it? Take your time. Vote, vote, vote. Vote, 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 vote. Oh, well, 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 well. Let's see how well we are doing. Um, we've got a few more votes to come in. Let's take a look and see how the results are going. A lot of you are saying from slave to family. And that's right. God said we were slaves to sin. But we don't just get free from being slaves. We get invited to be children of God, sons and daughters of the great king, which makes you a prince or a princess, depending if you're a boy or a girl. Hello, your majesties. It's so nice to see you. But Jesus did also turn a frown to a smile because the Bible tells us he turns our mourning into dancing. Oh, yeah, dancing. Oh, yeah, Jesus turns our mourning into dancing. He takes away, even if things go wrong us, around us, we can have peace inside of us and know that God is still with us. And so both those are right. The fruit to sweet one, that's not right. Sorry. Last one. From wild. for this. This is the fourth group of people to apparently have stolen the body of Jesus. And anyway, who would the who would the Roman 
soldiers give the body to? Would they give it to the Pharisees? Would they give it to the Romans? They definitely wouldn't have given it to the disciples, because that would have been stupid. And if they brought, gave it to the, the Pharisees or to the Romans, show us the body! Like, just debunk the disciples and all the eyewitness accounts by showing us the body of Jesus. Why not? Just do it! Do it now! Ridiculous! This is, this is stupid! Greg, what is this? Who's getting this information? Outrageous! It really is. I do apologise for interrupting your webinar for four times in a row. This is outrageous. At this, I, I don't even know what I'm going to do at this point. But this is... Guys, if, if one more thing... Alright, okay, where were we? We were in the middle of doing this before we got interrupted by the breaking news. Um, what did Jesus swap? Wild hair to tame hair? No. Uh, scruffy to smart? Uh, pretty cool with the random brick. Thanks, Matty, for that. We appreciate the random brick. Um, but no, it's not that. He swapped the sickness to health. Remember the whips that made stripes on Jesus' back by his stripes? We are healed. <laughs> and as we're talking about this, um, I want to bring up this uh, wine here. It's not actually wine, it's actually just red juice. Um, but this is part of communion. We've already talked about the bread and how that reminds us how Jesus was in human form, who took on everything that we deserved because he was like us, except without any sin. But uh, the Bible tells us with the wine that the life is found in the blood, that life is in the blood. And that makes sense, doesn't it? If you take all the blood out of an animal then it's not going to live for very long. But Jesus let his blood come out from all the places where he was hurt so that we could have life. It's another exchange. He gave up his life so that we could have his life and he took the death that we deserved and he had that for himself. So this blood, this drink that we drink is not actually blood, it's juice. As we drink this, it reminds us how powerful what Jesus did is for us on the crosses. It was so powerful that it could not be stopped. Jesus died and came back to life again and his life can now flow through us and in us. We interrupt your broadcast again to give you some more astonishing news. There are reports that there are some people who think that apparently Jesus didn't actually die. Hold up, again, Greg, what is this information? Outrage, I mean, obviously, like, let, okay, let, let's say this is true, that that means the Roman soldier, who's an expert in telling when people died, um, got it wrong. Okay, people make mistakes, we can accept that. But then Jesus, who had, who had got really weak because he'd been hanging on a cross for like 12 hours, he then was in a tomb, and then when he was in the tomb, he, he somehow moved a stone, even though he was weak, um, and, and in a completely dark tomb, he moved a stone, which it took 10 people to move the stone. And then he took on the Roman soldiers who were trained and ready and somehow did all of that. No, this cannot be true. How, how is this true? Who's thinking this? This is absolutely crazy. Absolute nonsense. Ridiculous. I, I said, I did say, what did I say last time? At breaking news, at this point, the only possible conclusion is that Jesus has come back from the dead. He died on the cross. He is now back from the dead today. This is breathtaking news. It's the only logical explanation when you look at all the facts. And talking about facts, the facts you've been giving me, Greg, are absolute nonsense. I, I said I'd quit. I'm done. I'm quitting this place and I'm going to follow Jesus. <laughs> The news is that Jesus died and came back to life again. And his resurrection proves that everything I've been telling you is true. Jesus really has swapped all these things for us. He's taken the evil. He's taken your sin. He's taken curses. He's taken sickness. And he's destroyed it on the cross. In fact, the Bible tells us when he, that he actually became sin. It's like he so became it that he died on the cross. And when he died, it died with 
him, which means not only is your sin gone, but you are totally free from it. You may still mess up and get things wrong, but it will no longer affect your relationship with Jesus if you have accepted that swap that Jesus has done for you. Jesus is alive. And so we're going to take communion together. Now you understand how powerful it is to remember Jesus' body was there in human form, meaning he is someone who could take your place, then I encourage you, let's just break off. If you've got your communion there with you, take a little bit of the bread and break it off. And we're going to say, thank you, God, that you died on the cross for us. Thank you that you took our place, that you were able to substitute yourself for us. You took what we deserved so that we could have what you have. And Lord, we just thank you that you died on the cross for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take this bread. Hmm. Jesus also took this cup and he said, guys, this is my blood. This is my life that's poured out for you. You can grab hold of this life. It's a gift to you. Life forever. Life like God intended. And God doesn't intend for you to have fights and arguments with your brothers and sisters. And if you're someone, if I think someone listening now, you struggle because one of your brothers is always mean to you. But you know, God says, let me do this exchange. Let me take the struggle and I will make you strong to be able to be who you should be. The blood of Jesus still has power today to make us strong in God and to help us to live for him. Someone here, you struggle because you're telling lies lots and lots again and again and again. It's become natural for you. And Jesus says, listen, when you take this communion wine now, this cup, your juice, the red juice, remember that my blood is powerful enough to help you to stop lying. It might be that you are sick in some way in your body. Well, when you take this um, communion, then say, Jesus, you swap my sickness. Take this away in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you that you've died on the cross and your cross has power to change our lives. And Lord, I just pray that as we take this communion cup now, that it will change us all from the inside out, that the reality of what you did on the cross and the proof of that reality when you rose from the dead will become real to us in such a way that we're able to walk away from everything that is not of you and walk into everything that you've prepared for us. Let there be healing. Let there be salvation. Let there be freedom. Let there be peace. And let there be joy in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And some of you, as I was praying then, you may have felt the Holy Spirit come close to you and uh, working in you at that time. Hey, if that's you, fantastic. Let us know. Let us know. Let us know what's going on. And uh, we're expecting that some of you are going to find things different from this time on. Well, we're nearly at the end of our time together, but it is time for quiz time. And because it is Easter, woo, we've got a special treat for you. We've gone a little bit out of focus. We'll get ourselves back in in a minute. Um, and our special treat for you is that the top two people are going to win the prize. But not only are the top two people going to win the prize, but there are less, slightly less people here because we've split the webinars into a morning session and an afternoon session, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. And we're going to keep that going into the future for the next couple of webinars at least, 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So you have a big chance to win a prize. The top two people are going to win one of the books that we have written. It's time for the quiz. Make sure you are on Menti. It's still there. The code is above me. If you've logged out, just refresh that page. It's also in the description down below if you still need it. Um, but it is time for quiz time. Let's get some quiz music on and uh, let's see you guys gathering ready for this quiz. How many of you have gathered already? Here it comes. Wow, quite a few of you. 
30 or so. There's just a few more. We're going to wait a little bit longer for a couple more people to join. And remember the code is there or it's down here. We've got 10 questions for you to answer. And the faster you answer each question, the more points you will get on our scoreboard. And the more points you get, the better you're going to do. And the more likely it is you'll get to the top. Some of the questions, they are easy peasy ones. Some of them, they're a bit difficult. Hey, and if, if you would rather just cheer on your brother or your sister as they're doing it, you go for that and work together and see how quickly you can answer each of these questions. But make sure you get them right. As I said, some of them are easy and some of them are a bit sticky, tricky, tricky. Well, I think we are pretty much all there. Uh, menti.com make sure you keep looking at your phone because there's a bit of a delay between me speaking and things happening here and you want to be as fast as you can to be able to get as many points as you can well it is time for us to start this quiz 10 questions and here we go oh yeah what do we deserve when we sin do we deserve no sweeties? Do we deserve no screen time? Do we deserve a smack bottom? Do we deserve to be locked in a cupboard? Or do we deserve death? What do we deserve when we sin? When we do things wrong or think bad thoughts? Or even um, when we say nasty things or we don't do the things we're supposed to? What's the, what do we deserve? What's the wages for sin? Lots of you are saying death. And the right answer is death. The wages of sin, our memory verse said, is death. We deserve death. That may sound pretty sad, and it would be if the story stopped there. But remember, Jesus died in our place, so now we don't have to die. All right, let's take a look. Well done, Lucy. Well done, Elijah, Naomi, Bill, Zuzu, Gabby, Elsa, Barnwells, Elijah, and Abby. Fantastic to see you all on the scoreboard. If you're not on the scoreboard yet, there's lots of questions this time. You stand a chance to get on. Just answer as fast as you can. What does the crown of thorns remind us of? Does it remind us of not to touch thorns? Does it remind us that Jesus is king? That Jesus won? That the Romans were mean? Or that Jesus took the curse of sin? I mean, I guess it could be all of those. But there are some things I talked about when we were talking about the crown of thorns on our head. And get your votes in as quickly as you can. Wow, it looks like all of you have done it. Three seconds left. Jesus is king. Jesus won. The Romans were mean. Jesus took the curse. The right answer for this one is three of them. Jesus won. It's the victor's crown. Jesus took the curse. Remember the thorns after the Garden of Eden. And Jesus is king over all. Well done. It looks all of you got it right. But the faster you answered, the more points you got. And that will affect our leaders board in this way. Let's see who now makes it up to the top. It's rearranging. Well done, Elijah. You've got up there. Abby, you were the fastest this time. I think Isabel and Ruth, welcome to the leaders board. I don't think you were there a moment ago. I may be wrong, actually, with Isabel. Thinking about it. It's going so fast. Question number three. Let's get this speeding up. Now, which book of the Bible was our memory verse from? We've given you a choice of five different books. Was it Matthew? Was it John? Was it Romans? Was it Hebrews? Or was it Revelation? One of those five books. Which book in the Bible did our memory verse come from? Get your votes in now. Quick, 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 quick. There's just ten seconds left. Which book of the Bible was it? I'll give you a clue. It was one of those five. <laughs> I'm not helping you any more than that. Oh, all right then, with two seconds left, I'll tell you the right answer. The right answer is the book of the Bible that our memory verse came from was the book of Romans. Oh, well done. Most of you got that one. If you didn't get that one right, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter, but it will affect the scoreboards here. Let's see how we get on. Now, we've got a trickier question coming up. Do you know where in the Bible that book of uh, where in the Bible our Bible reference is. Let's take a look and see if you can actually tell me just the chapter that our Bible verse was in today. What chapter? It was the book of Romans, but chapter what? I'll give you a clue. There are 16 chapters in Romans, so it's either chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16. Get your answers in, and uh, we will see uh, which ones it is. We've got quite a few answers coming in here. So get in your answers along the way. Which chapter of the Bible is it in? Just checking on my little screen. I'm able to tell who has got the right ones and who has got the wrong ones and change any answers if we need the right answer. But it's Romans chapter 6, verse 20. 
23. Well done, someone put 23, but that was the verse, not the chapter. I know, that's a hard one, isn't it? Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Well done, well done. If you've got that right, you're doing amazingly, guys. Fantastic. Let's take a look at the next question. We're speeding along now. Question number five. We are halfway through the quiz. Five out of ten. And answer as fast as you can. What do you have to do to get eternal life? Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says the wages of sin is death. But how do you get eternal life forever? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Do you have to be good? Do you have to beg God? Please give it to me. Please give it to me. Do you just receive it? Do you have to be kind to others or should you worship God? What do you have to do to receive eternal life, life forever? Is it be good, beg God, just receive it, be kind to others or do worship God? The picture's there to give you a clue because the gift of God is eternal life. You don't have to worship God to receive it. It's not like God says, you must sing this song three times for me. And if you want to learn more about worship, we're going to find out about that in the next session. No, you just receive the gift, you accept it. Now, having accepted the gift, then, of course, you're going to worship God because it's such an amazing gift. Of course you're going to worship God. Why would you not? If God's given you life, you're going to worship him. But you don't thank your auntie so you can get a present from her. You thank your auntie because you've already received a present from her. And in the same way, we worship God because he's God and he's given us this gift of life. Not because if we don't worship him, he won't give us life. Right, Isabel, Naomi, Lucy, Desru. Well done, Desru. You were top of the fastest one on that one. Karis, Zuzu, Pony, Hannah, Moe, and Elijah. Well done. You are all doing fantastically well. Now, question number six of ten. This is question number six. And the question is, which of these is fake news? Jesus swaps our something for our something. Remember those sketches? Jesus swaps our sin for his goodness, our stinky socks for clean socks, our curse for blessing, frown for a smile, or, cur or um, slavery for family. Which of these does Jesus swap or not swap on the cross? Which one's fake news? If someone says, this is what Jesus does for you, which is fake news? You've got five seconds left in which to answer this one. Get your answers in fast, fast, fast. Oh, I think most of you got it. Stinky socks for clean socks. That's fake news. It's not Jesus who does that. It's probably your mum, uh, in all likelihood. I wonder if any of you have to do your own washing, actually, thinking about it. But I think most of you will be your mum or maybe your dad who does that for you. So stinky socks for clean socks is not Jesus. That's your mum or your dad. But all the other things, or your auntie or your, or your grandma or whoever you live with, but all, all of the things that uh, the house was there, that's a swap Jesus makes. He takes the curse of the uh, blessing. He takes our slavery so that he was slave when he was nailed to that cross and stuck there and so that we could be part of this family. And well done, all of you who are getting through this. You're way raising. Well, those in the lead are really in the lead. You're doing very, very well. All right, question number seven. We've got just a few left before our time is up. What does the body of Jesus, the bread, remind us of in communion? Does it remind us that it's almost the end of the service? Does it remind us that it's dinner time and I'm hungry? Does it remind us that Jesus tastes nice? That Jesus was a perfect human? Or that Jesus' body was broken for us? What is the right answer? Answer fast. The faster you answer, the more points you get. Everyone has voted. And the right answer is actually two on this one. That Jesus was a perfect human being. His body was like our body. Um, daily bread thing. With, but he was without yeast without the thing that makes bread rise up but he was like this and the yeast Jesus described the Pharisees as yeast as basically they were sinners but also Jesus' body was broken for us so those two things it reminds us of whenever we take the bread I didn't really mention to you earlier about um, the, the yeast part but you can look up what yeast does and see how Jesus called the Pharisees as ones who didn't have yeast okay well done Naomi, Isabel and Lucy it is tight between you but there's only the top two are going to get presents this, uh, prizes this time um, use uh, question number eight use only one word it's important you listen to the instructions one word to say what the blood reminds us of think what is in the blood we said something is in the blood what does the blood give us. It's only four letters long, this word. It's a specific word that we use. And make sure that you use the same word that we've said. Okay? Uh, there's quite a lot of people answering this. Some of you are going to get right, some of you are not going to get right. We're just checking along the way. You've got five more seconds. So if, we, if you spell it slightly wrong, we will be able to give you the answer 
Uh, I'm going to mark that person as correct because you spelled the word life slightly wrong. Um, but the correct answer is life. Life, the person with light, I'm going to assume you did the wrong letter there. Um, the blood gives us life. What is in the blood? It's not wine in the blood. If wine was in your blood, you would be feeling a little bit drunk and tipsy. But what's in the blood is life. It gives us life to breathe, to carry the oxygen around our body. Let's see what that's done to the scoreboard. We've got just a couple of questions left. And when we come to the end of our quiz, uh, we will have uh, no time for questions. But I'm going to stay around as long as I need to to answer any questions that you guys have at the very end of this time. So you're welcome to hang around with me for as long as you guys want to. Um, but it's, uh, you won't have to say once we say the time is officially up, which will be just after the quiz. We'll tell you a few more things that are coming up and then we'll take it from there. Question number nine. Here we go. What does the communion wine remind us of? Ooh, this should be an easier one. Uh, does it remind us of? The alcohol tastes yucky? Does it remind us of redemption? Does it remind us of blood? Does it remind us of life? Does it remind us of forgiveness? Which of those does it remind us of? Answer as fast as you can. Quick, 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 quick. And your time is up. Everyone has voted. And the right answer for this one is, well, all of them. Even that wine can be yucky. I think that's a fair one to have, isn't it? Redemption, God buys us back. Blood, the blood of Jesus given for us. Life, we have life forever as a gift from God. Forgiveness, we're forgiven of our sins. Take a look at the leaderboard. Only the top two are going to win a prize, but all of you will have the fun of being part of this and seeing how well and how fast you can answer. Keep going, you're doing brilliantly. Well done, Lucy, Naomi. Uh, well done, Ali and Pony and Gabby down the bottom of the leaderboard there. And Yasmin as well, I saw there, and a few others. This is the final question. The top two people will be the winners in this question. Here we go. Who is the best? Answer as fast as you can. The faster you answer, the more points you get. Is it you? You say, I am. Is it your mum? Is it Ollie? That's me. My name's Ollie. Is it Jesus? Or is it the Queen of England? Who is the best? Quick answer, answer as fast as you can. Three seconds left. I think everyone's voted. And the right answer is Jesus is the best. He's the only one who died for your sins. He's the only one who can help you to be close to God. He's the only one who can forgive you for everything you've done and who knows all about you. And he's the only one who made you. Let's take one final look at our scoreboard together um, before we pull this to an end. And the right answer is... Oh, that changed things a bit. Lucy and Isabel, you are both winners of the prize. If you are the winner, Lucy, if you're the winner, Isabel, please send me an email or get your mum to send me an email or your dad to info at childrencan.co.uk. We're going to put that email address into the chat. Send us your address and uh, we will send you a copy of one of my books, probably one of the God's Generals for Kids books, um, because that's a good book to have. Now, if you look on Menti now, you have got a chance to ask any questions that you want. I'm not going to answer them live in the session. I'm going to end this session in a moment. We're going to pray together and end the session. And then when it's ended, then we're going to take it from there. We are going to... Um, we're going to go through all of those questions and I'll stay as long as there are questions for me to answer um, that I can see on the board. Then we will answer as many of the questions as we possibly can for you, because I know you guys love to have a chance to ask difficult questions um, to make me scratch my head and think a little bit. And uh, also, yeah, I like the way lots of you like to cheer us on and say thank you. And that was fantastic. We've got some of those coming in already, which is nice to see. Now, the next webinar is coming up in five weeks. It's a long way away, this one. But these last two webinars were very close together. So five weeks time, you'll find all the details in an email that will arrive in your inbox in about a couple of hours time. Um, it's on loving God, which is all about worship. And we've got another webinar coming up about a month after that. But if you say, I can't wait five weeks, I would love to be back and learn some more. Well, we are going to be doing the Bible experience next week week. Let me remind you of that. It is £10 per household to be part of it. And that will get you access to two sessions, which are about the same length as these sessions. They will have a slightly different feel to them because we are trying to get through a whole Bible and give you the big picture. I don't think Matty, Benny, Benny and Abby will be there with their sketches. So we will feel slightly different, um, but you will still have fun and you will still learn a lot of things along the way. So I'm not sure if we played 
um, some ads where I just want to remind you, if you want to be part of future webinars, you can send us in a clip. Um, and let me just show you this one more time so you can see how you can be involved and maybe even have your face on the screen in a future webinar or in some of our promotional videos that we do. Take a look at this and then when we come back, well, let's, let's pray actually and then um, that, that'll be the end of it when this little clip shows and then after that, um, we will go through all those questions for those of you who want to stay on. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. I hope you've had a fantastic time. It's been brilliant to be with you all this special Easter Saturday and to remember how amazing and how wonderful our God is who's given everything he has so that we can know him. Lord, we just thank you that we've been able to meet together and think about how wonderful you are. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you gave up everything you had so that we can be close to you. We love you so much, Lord, and we are so grateful that you are God, that you have taken everything from us so that we can have everything that you have for from you for us. Lord, I pray that you will bless every child and every family who's been watching this together, that your blessing and your presence and your peace will be in their home. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to hang on for the questions, we'll see you in a minute. Otherwise, take a look at this before you go and we'll see you next time. Oh, I get confused. How all the it's stories time. in the Bible fit together? I just want it's to time. get a big picture of the Bible. Oh, I not just that one. Hold want on to a know second. God more. This is the one I want to show you. Show this.